Hello and welcome to my review of the Orcs Zod Grod Wurtznagger. Now currently the only way to get your hands on this model is via the Warhammer 40,000 Beast Snagger Orcs Army Set, uh, which would cost you £125. He is a named character, uh, so I do think that he will uh, appear in his own little box at some point, probably for about £24, £25, uh, given the size of him and the detail. So the format of this review video is we will have a closer look at this Orc character. We'll go through some size comparisons uh, with um, some of the new Orcs in the army set and with existing Orcs. And then finally, we'll go through all of his um, 40K rules, which can be found in the brand new 9th edition Orc Codex. First things first, if you haven't already um, checked out my Beast Snagger Orcs army set live streams, there are three of them, where, and in all three, I build um, pretty much most of the Orcs in the uh, in this army set and I started off with the name character. So here he is, Zod Grod Wurtsnagger. Zod Grod, it's a bit, bit of a difficult word, bit of a difficult name to sort of pronounce, but uh, he's on this big 50 mil base. I think it works for him. Um, you know, he's, he's quite a sort of gangly big orc and, and definitely the, the hair um, gives him a lot of presence. He's got this slugger, uh, it, it's a bit odd that um, it doesn't actually have, like it's not a, a named weapon or anything because it has this needle injector thing on it. However, the melee weapon here is uh, called the Grab Zapper and uh, does have its own like unique um, profile. But uh, yeah, quite odd to see um, an orc with hair. I mean, the, you know, most hair we've seen um, orcs with have been kind of like top knots and things. Uh, but uh, if you look really, really closely, um, you can see that the beard and the top of the uh, hair there have been stapled into his um, skull. Uh, I believe it's like squig hair or something. So yeah, um, he definitely fits in with the, the Beast Snagger uh, range. He's got, um, you know, his cloak is made up of different um, sort of animal skins, squig skins. Um, he's got uh, like a tubing here and um, uh, a power supply to this uh, grab zapper. He's got one of these uh, whaling hooks, I want to call it, and a bit of a bionic leg going, it, going on from his knee uh, down to his foot. Um, it, it's difficult to see, but um, certainly, you know, underneath him, uh, and, and I would have liked to have seen this like off to the side a little bit, but um, he is kind of standing in the presence of a big giant footprint um, akin to say like Jurassic Park. Uh, I'm sure someone could uh, put some nice water effect in there to, to highlight it a bit better, but um, I'm guessing it's some kind of squiggasaw um, uh, footprint that they've got going on. So that's the model, very straightforward to put together, no issues whatsoever. Um, I think it looks quite cool and um, yeah, definitely unlike uh, anything we've seen for Orcs, uh, you know, in the past, he's, he's, you know, if you want to use him as a runt herd um, for your Gretchen, of course, uh, he'd make an, an excellent um, stand-in um, for, for that model. So size comparisons then, uh, let's just uh, show you some size comparisons with some of the um, other orcs in the set. Uh, so uh, here is a just a normal orc snagger boy or lads as I like to call them. Um, so he is a fair bit taller uh, than the boys. The uh, knob in the set is uh, you know not that big um, compared to the boys. So that's why I've shown you him with one of the uh, snagger boys. Compared to the knob on a smasher squig. Um, this is actually the biggest model in the set. Um, it's got a lot of presence, very, uh, you know, very tall. And it's important to note that um, although he is a character, he's not actually an HQ. He is still just a fast attack uh, choice. And it's and if he's got a, a unit of Squig Hog boys, they only take up the space of one battlefield role slot instead of the two. But you can take him separate as a as a fast attack choice if you wish. So that's where he is next to. I guess the, the usual size minis and the, the biggest mini in that set. Next to usual miniatures, uh, here he is next to a normal kind of orc boy. So as you can see, he's, he's a fair bit taller. Um, haven't been able to pick out my runt herd um, out of my box. He's probably 
buried um, in like a, a mountain of orcs somewhere. So I apologize about that. Um, no doubt you'll see him in my, you know, updated orc collection video um, once all of the orc releases have uh, come out, like I always like to do those videos. And it takes me great pleasure whenever I get the opportunity to get my knob out on the channel. And here it is. Of course, it's not as tall as a Zod Grod. So if you wanted to um, surround him with a load of knobs, then um, he's still going to be taller. And of course, the biggest knob of them all, should I say war boss, um, is Gaskell uh, Thraka. And yeah, you can just see how ginormous Gaskell is compared to this model. He truly is the biggest of the orcs, the biggest and the baddest. Yeah, gives you an idea of, of the size uh, compared to them. If you have uh, Gaskell, uh, I'd recommend getting them if you haven't already. Final size comparisons I always like to make uh, are with the tried and tested three um, Imperium minis. So I've got uh, Sly Marbo, who Zodrog towers over, a Space Marine. Again, just a bit taller than a Space Marine, but I think what a lot of people want to see is how tall he is compared to the Primaris. I mean, he's on a bit of a scenic base, so if we take that away from him, the Primaris is probably a little bit taller, but he is in that hunched state. I reckon if he stood completely upright, he would be a bit taller than the Primaris. Um, so, yeah, um, if you're going against Primaris, Primaris are going to be um, a little bit smaller than this HQ choice. And the last part of this review will consist of a review of his rules. So you'll find him in the HQ section of the codex. It is a huge uh, section uh, of the book. Um, there are now 17 um, HQ choices for orcs. I mean, that's, yeah, um, no, not quite as many as Space Marines, but it's definitely getting there. Uh, he is a power points cost of a four and a points cost of 65 points which isn't too bad it's um you know he's quite cheap really uh, under the 70 points um, marker his movement speed is five inches weapon skill is two plus ballistic skill five plus strength five toughness five six wounds four attacks leadership seven and a save of six plus remember uh, he does have the Beast Snagger ability, and this is a new ability, so I thought I'd take a bit of time just to explain it. Um, any units with this special rule, if they make an attack that targets a vehicle or monster, you add one to the attack's hit roll. So if you're going up against monsters and vehicles, uh, you know, you're pretty much guaranteed to hit. You know, if you're getting ones to hit a vehicle or monster, you know, you can't miss going up against them. And also, he's going to have a 6 plus invulnerable save. So yeah, he's got a 6 plus normal, but um, he does have a 6 plus invuln. He's equipped with a slugger, the grab zapper, and your army can only include one Zod, Grod, Wurt Snagger model. The slugger works exactly the same as all the other sluggers. It's a 12 inch range, pistol 1, strength 4, AP 0, damage 1 weapon. But the grab zapper is a melee weapon. It bumps his strength up by 2, so that's strength 7. AP minus 3 and damage 2. That's very nice. He's getting 4 attacks of strength 7 AP minus 3. So, and there's no sacrifice to him hitting uh, anything in close combat. So he's still going to get his 4 attacks and he's still going to be hitting on the 2 plus. Even better against monsters and vehicles. His abilities. Beast Snagger, which I've already explained. Here we go and Wah. Squig Stopper. At the start of the fight phase, you can select one enemy monster unit that is within six inches of this model and roll 1d6. On a 2+, plus, that unit is not eligible to fight this phase until after all eligible units from your army have done so. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, so you want to have him going up against monster units in other armies. Super Runts. At the start of your first battle round, select one Grutchin core unit from your army to be Zodrog's Super Runts. Each time a model in that unit makes an attack, add one to their, that attack's hit roll. That unit can shoot while performing an action without that action failing. So that's fantastic and it just gives your grots a little bit of uh, a buff there. You know, they need all the help they can get. The weapon skill is only 5+, plus and the ballistic skill is 4+, plus. Um, but, you know, adding that extra one, um, nice little buff. Keywords, Orc, Snakebite, Character, Infantry, Beast Snagger, Runt Herd, Zod Grod, Wurt Snagger. So there you go, that's all of the rules for him. Uh, as I mentioned previously, you can take him as a proxy to your Runt Herd if you wish. He's kind of like a, a boss version of a Runt Herd. 
and I wish that there was some kind of rule whereby he would uh, increase um, the move characteristic of them or Gretchen's um, ignore modifiers to combat attrition tests um, but uh, I still think he's fantastic especially for the 65 points um, he's a nice little buffing character and uh, you know he's quite strong at strength 7 he's quite tough at toughness 5 he's got a fair, fair number of wounds the only downside to him is he doesn't really have a good range weapon he's only got that pistol at 12 inches uh, and um, it's only got one shot and it's ballistic skill 5 plus anyway um, so you want to be getting him into close combat as soon as possible uh, especially against uh, monsters and bumping up your um, Gretchen core units. What do you guys think of Zod Grod Wurtsnagger as a, a character? Uh, please do put your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching for Gork and Mork.